Hello and welcome to today's lesson. And today we are going to have a very, very useful lesson because we're going to talk about mixed conditionals. That's coming up. Welcome to today's lesson. My name is Wes. This is Interactive English, which is the place that you want to be if you're looking to practice and improve your English skills. And today it is a more of an advanced grammar lesson because we are going to be talking about mixed conditionals. And I know that, that this is something that, that can be a challenge for, for many learners who are trying to improve their English skills and really understand these conditional sentences. And especially mixed conditionals can be very, very confusing. So we're really gonna have a look at them today and some of the different types of mixed conditionals. But before we begin, if you are joining us, I want you to say, What's up in the chat? Write your name, tell me where you're joining us from. And even if you're watching this later, please just write your name in the chat, say what's up. We just love hearing from you guys. So, Crystal, Saad, uh, Gosia, Demith, Mandeep, uh, Bruno, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Andre, hi, welcome. Thank you guys for joining me today for this very useful lesson. And I will tell you, it is challenging. It's a little more difficult, mixed conditionals. Now, before we just jump right in and talk about what mixed conditionals are and show you the different types, it's good to review and really understand, well, what are conditional sentences and how are they used? And we did several lessons on conditional sentences on the zero conditional, the first, the second, and the third. And I will link those in the description. And if you are watching this later, I will put a card up there. And I highly, I highly recommend that you, you check out those lessons because we give you more examples and really talk about how those sentences are used and talk a little more about the grammar. In this lesson, I'm going to quickly review those conditionals and then we're really gonna focus and talk more about the mixed conditionals. And of course, at the end, all right, I want you guys to get ready because we will practice using these conditionals. We are gonna practice using conditionals and I will want you to write to us in the comments and in the chat. So again, Junior, uh, Ash Ashraf, Besma, Marco, uh, Malcolm, Patricia, hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me. And now let's, let's begin. Let's start talking about conditionals. So let's first just quickly look, well, what are conditional sentences? Conditional sentences, you have two parts, all right? You have an if clause. When you think of conditional sentences, we always think of them as if statements. So you have an if clause, which is the condition. If you subscribe to our channel, this is a dependent clause because it's not a complete sentence. It's not a complete thought. So if you subscribe to our channel, well, what, what's the result? What, what happens because of that? That is going to be our main clause. And that is if you subscribe to our channel, you will learn English. Okay, I'm really trying to uh, promote, promote ourselves right now. So if you subscribe to our channel, that's our condition you will learn English. That is going to be the result. So that is a basic, simple, uh, conditional sentence. You have an if clause in the condition and your main clause in the result. Now, one thing I wanna tell you guys, when we look through and, and review these conditions, the, the zero conditional, the first, the second, and the third, I think it's useful when, when you're learning these, I, I tell you, you know, pay, pay attention to the grammar. These conditionals are, are relatively rule-based. So if you learn these rules then and, and learned how they're used with the grammar, you can use that to create more sentences. So keep that in mind. And I have put the grammar up there so you know how to create these sentences. So you can use the grammar. I know that when many people are learning English, they, they want to learn rules. They want to try to learn the rule because it's like, okay, now I understand this. So with these conditionals, it's okay. You can, you can, they're fairly rule-based. 
Think about the grammar, all right? That's all I'm gonna say, all right? So let's look at the zero conditional. And as we go through these, um, you know, practice writing some sentences, go for it. So first off, I wanna ask you, do you guys know, can you tell me, how do you use the zero conditional, the first conditional, the second conditional, and the third conditional? Can you tell me what are the situations in which we use those conditional sentences? If you guys know, write those in the chat. Um, I wanna hear from you guys. So let's talk about them right now. So the zero conditional is used to talk about a general truth, a scientific fact. If you guys have an example sentence, please write them, all right? So my sentence, which is a general truth, it's for me. It might not be for everybody, but I might say, you know, if I read in the car, I get sick. I could even throw an adverb of frequency in there and say, if I read in the car, I always get sick. This is true. This is, it's true for me. And in the condition and in the result, we are going to use the present simple. You use the present simple for the condition, if I read in the car, and the present simple for the result, okay? So, uh, yes, Pato, you said zero conditional. These are real situations. These are truths. These things really happen, okay? So that is the zero conditional. Now, let's look at the first conditional. Again, rule-based, I don't think it's gonna be too difficult. So we use the first conditional, all right, to talk about a possible or likely situation in the future. So we're talking about something, we're talking about the future with the first conditional. And my condition, here's my sentence, if it rains, we'll get wet. So if it rains, that's my condition, simple present, we'll get wet. That's the result, my main clause, and that's where I'm using the future. If it rains, we will get wet, okay? Um, excellent. So let's look at, I, I think that's, again, you can follow it. Simple present, future, it makes sense. First conditional. Now, now it starts to get a little more tricky with the second conditional. So the second conditional is used to talk about a hypothetical or an unlikely situation. Hypothetical or unlikely situation that, okay, it's... It, it cannot happen, it's not going to happen, or there's, it's, it's really, really unlikely that it's going to happen. So oftentimes when you hear a sentence with the second conditional, somebody's maybe giving you advice and they would say, they'd start out and say this, if I were you, okay? If I were you, all right, I would, you have, use would plus the verb, base verb. If I were you, I would hit that like button, all right? Again, I'm trying to be very, very suggestive to you right now, all right? Notice also that this is one of the situations, um, these if statements, when we use the subjunctive in English, because it's not often, all right? Um, if I were, all right? We're using the subjunctive in this case. If I were you, I would hit that like button, okay? It's a hypothetical situation, because, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not you, okay? I am not you, so this is hypothetical, all right? So, again, um, oh, somebody pointed out, yes, thank you for pointing out my mistake. This is a typo right here, I just noticed that. Yes, not if I were a you, it should say if I were you. Ignore that article A in there, again, it's interesting, I go through these slides again and again and again, and I find some typos, but sometimes I still uh, miss them. But thank you for pointing that out to me. Yes, it should say, if I were you, I would hit that like button. Again, all right, think that, keep that in mind. That's what I would do if I were you. Second conditional. Now let's look at the third conditional. It's used to talk about an imaginary or unreal situation in the past, okay? You should know, okay, with the third conditional, both the condition and the result, th these both, both of these things, they happen in the past. It's in the past, and that's why you say it's imaginary, it's unreal, it's not possible, because we can't change the past. It's already happened. So in the condition, in my, uh, in my if clause, I'm going to use the past perfect. If I had studied, okay? If I had studied the result, I'm going to use would have plus the past participle. If I had studied, I would have passed the exam. 
okay? If I had studied, I would have passed the exam, okay? I didn't study in the past, I didn't pass the exam in the past. Both of these things happen in the past, it's imaginary, it's unreal, it didn't happen, okay? Because I did not study, which means I did not pass the exam. So if I had studied, I would have passed the exam. So this is, that is a quick review of the zero, the first, the second, and the third conditional. And I would recommend, again, if you haven't seen our other video lessons on these conditionals, you can check them out. We go into a little more detail, we give some more examples, and I think it would really help. And even if you feel comfortable with them, it's always good to review. So the way I would say, now, now let's get into the mixed conditionals. And I have four different types that I'm gonna go over. Sometimes people say, oh, there's more than four mixed conditionals. Other people say, oh, there's only two mixed, you know, again, don't, don't get caught up with, oh, how many there are. I'm gonna give you four examples, all right? And we're gonna go through these different ones. Now, the reason why it's difficult and it's different is because when, before we talked about the other conditionals, I told you, I said, pay attention to the grammar. You, it, with those conditionals, you can pay attention to the grammar, you can see what's being used, and, and then try to make some more sentences and practice those. With the mixed conditionals, I would say it's the opposite. Do not focus on the grammar. Do not pay attention to the grammar and try to understand mixed conditionals based on the grammar, okay? I'm still gonna give it to you, but I would say try not, try not to think about it that way. You have to kind of change the way that, that you're thinking about mixed conditionals in order to really understand. So the tip that I have for you, the two things that what I want you guys to focus on are these two things, all right? You need to try to imagine the situation and when things are happening. Imagine the situ situation and imagine when they are happening. Those are the two things that I think are really going to help you understand mixed conditionals. So don't focus so much on the grammar, focus on the situation, which is more like the main idea, and focus on what, when, when is it happening? Is it happening in the past? Is it happening in the present? Or is it happening in the future? Okay, so those, that's, my, that's my tip for you as we go through these. I'm gonna give you um, a couple different examples with this, and I'm gonna try and show you what, what I mean, and we're gonna work backwards a little bit. And when we do the practice, then again, th that's gonna be good practice because I'm gonna give you a situation and you will need to write the sentence. You will need to write the mixed conditional, all right? So let's look at the first one for you. So the mixed conditional number one is, this one is, we're, we're used, <clears throat> it's used to talk about the present result of a past condition. So in all of my examples here, I'm always putting the condition first and then the result. And I've color coded these two. So if it's red, it's talking about the past. If it's green, present, and purple, which you will see in a moment, we're talking about the future, okay? So these are color coded as well. Red's the past, uh, green is the present. So we're talking about a past condition. If I had gotten the job, all right, we're using the past perfect. If I had gotten the job, what's the present result? I would live in New York City. We're using would plus the base verb, all right? If I had gotten the job, I would live in New York City. So again, when I say, think about the situation. Did I get the job? No. Do I live in New York City now? No. Okay, but if I had gotten the job, I would live in New York City. So let me give you another example. And like I said, we're going to work our way backwards. Okay, so with this conditional, mixed conditional number one, if he had taken care of himself, he wouldn't be sick. Okay, so now let's, let's look at the situation here and then we're gonna go back to the conditional because basically these two are the same. The mixed conditional is just another way of, of saying this situation right here. So I'm gonna say, so the situation is this. He did not take care of himself. He's sick now. That is our situation. So 
Another way we can say that, and I want you just to listen to me and hopefully this will make a little more sense, okay? He did not take care of himself. He's sick now. But if he had taken care of himself, he wouldn't be sick. So again, the mixed conditional is just another way of stating this situation right here. If he had taken care of himself, he wouldn't be sick, all right? I hope that makes sense. If it does make sense, boom, hit that like button, all right? Um, and if, if feel free, guys, go, th go. feel free to practice. Use some sentences as you're going along. Um, and somebody, that way, if somebody's watching this, if you're watching this later, you can try to read some of these sentences. But we will practice in just a moment. The next mixed conditional I want to show you is this one right here, okay? So this mixed conditional is used to talk about the future result of a past condition. So again, it's color-coded, my condition in the past, my result, it's in the future. So I'm going, and this is where I say some people might combine, they say, oh, you know, you, mixed conditional one and two, they're kind of the same thing. Well, you know, again, I wanted to separate them because we're talking about this is a definite result in the future. So my past condition, if I had gotten the job, my future result, that's the past perfect, my future result, again, would plus the base verb, I'd be moving to New York City next month, okay? Now, when we're talking about the future result, I think oftentimes you might have it um, with the continuous tense, I would be moving. That's not always the case. I think the real key would be the context and people might give you a time indicator. They might tell you, okay, that's the future. Next month, that tells us the future. If I say tomorrow or next week or next year or tonight, that's going to tell you the future. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If I had gotten the job, I'd be moving to New York City next month. Now, if I were to ask you about the situation, okay, did I get the job? No, all right. Am I going to move to New York City next month? No, again, that's not going to happen. But if I had gotten the job, I'd be moving to New York City. Let's look at another example, past condition, future result, right here. So, <laughs> and, and this, is, this is not true, by the way, but my past condition, okay, if Wes hadn't squandered all of his money, he'd travel to Brazil for his birthday, okay? My birthday, it's in November, keep that in mind. It's in November, it's in the future, okay? So we're talking about a future result. If Wes hadn't squandered all his money, he traveled to Brazil for his birthday. Um, and any of you who are out there, if you're, if you're from Brazil, I haven't been, Yuan and I, we, we have not been, we want to go, we really want to visit Brazil. I've heard a lot of many great, great things um, about Brazil and many other countries as well that we wanna to travel to. But let's look at our situation down here. So if I said, Wes lost all his money in Vegas, okay? Again, it happened in the past, I lost it. Wes lost all his money in Vegas, he cannot go to Brazil for his birthday, which is in November, it's in the future. So Wes lost all his money in Vegas, he cannot go to Brazil for his birthday. But if Wes hadn't squandered all of his money, he'd travel to Brazil for his birthday. So again, think about the situation, and then you could ask, you could say, but, and then reword it using the mixed conditional, okay? Wes lost all his money in Vegas. He cannot go to Brazil for his birthday. But if Wes hadn't squandered all of his money, he'd travel to Brazil for his birthday. This is mixed conditional number two. Let's look at another one. So I hope this one makes sense. And then again, it's going to be good to practice because I'm going to give you the situation and then you guys need to think of the mixed conditional. The third one that I want to look at is this one. It's used to talk about a past, the past result of a present condition. The, the conditions in the present right now, the result is in the past, okay? So let's look at our sentence. If I didn't have a bike, I would have taken the bus. If I didn't have a bike, we're gonna use the simple past, I would have taken the bus. Would have plus the past participle. 
If I didn't have a bike, I would have taken the bus. So let me give you um, a situation to help you think about this. Maybe you're, you're going to work and you ride, you ride your bike and you're, you get to work, you're in the present and somebody says, you know, oh, you know what? You, you rode your bike to work today. Why did, why did you ride your bike? Uh, you know, and you could say, well, if I, if I didn't have a bike, I would have taken the bus. If I didn't have a bike, I would have taken the bus. It happened in the past, okay? So this is the third one. Let's look at another example, all right? Present condition, past result. If she didn't have to work, she would have given us a ride. So in the present, she didn't have to work. The past, something that happened in the past, she would have given us a ride. So here's our situation, and that's gonna help us understand the mixed conditional. She is working now. All right, in the present, she's there right now, she's working, she's at work. And because she's at work, she could not give us a ride. She couldn't give us a ride in the past, it's already happened. But if she didn't have to work, she would have given us a ride, okay? So I hope that makes sense. She's working now, she could not give us a ride, but if she didn't have to work, she would have given us a ride. It's the present condition, um, it's the, it's the past result of a present condition. Okay. So let's look at the fourth one. All right. And again, we will practice in just a moment. This is always good practice. And I know if you're joining us a little late, it, you can, you can go back through and, and watch some of these. I will review real quickly. So the fourth one used to talk about the past result of a future condition. Okay, so our condition, it's in the future. The result is in the past, okay? If he wasn't going to come to the wedding, all right, we would have invited someone else. Now, right here, uh, you might be wondering, you're like, wait a second, I thought you said the subjunctive. We can, if you really, really wanna be grammatically correct, you can use the subjunctive, but just so you know, many people think when, when people are talking in colloquial speech, Oftentimes they break this rule and they don't use the subjunctive. I would say if you want to get really formal, then yes, you could say that use the subjunctive if he weren't going to come to the wedding. But I wanted to give you that example of both. So we could say again, in the simple past, either way, whether you use the subjunctive or not, we're using the simple past. If he wasn't going to come to the wedding, the wedding is not now, the wedding is in the future, all right? We would have invited someone else. That's in the past. The invitations, they have already been sent out. So I'm saying a future condition. If he wasn't going to come to the wedding, something, a past result, because the invitations are already out, we would have invited someone else. Let's look at another example using this one. Future condition. If they weren't going to bring food tonight, we would have made a reservation at the restaurant. So in this case, it's a future condition if, we weren't going to, if they weren't going to bring food tonight, we would have made a reservation at the restaurant. Here's our situation. They will bring food. We didn't make a reservation. That's what happened. They will bring food, and that means in the past, we didn't make a reservation. But if they weren't going to bring food tonight, we would have made a reservation at the restaurant. So I hope in looking at these situations that it's, it's, you can kind of work your way backwards. You can look at the situation and that's gonna help you reword it and use a mixed conditional to basically express this same thing. So let's, let's, we're, we're going to practice, but before we practice, all right, I want to review that, do a quick review of some of these mixed conditionals um, for those that may be joining. And again, it's always good to review. So the first one that I talked about and we're going to, I'm just, I'm just going to give you the situation and, and show you this. So again, we're talking about the, um, the present result of a past condition. Okay. He did not take care of himself. So he's sick now, but our past condition, if he had taken care of himself, the present result, he wouldn't be sick. Okay. So this is the mixed conditional number one. Number two, we could say the situation, again, Wes lost all his money in Vegas. He cannot go to Brazil for his birthday. The past condition, 
if Wes hadn't squandered all of his money, squandered is to lose and to lose it unwisely and to do something stupid. If Wes hadn't squandered all of his money, the future result, he'd travel to Brazil for his birthday. So we have a past condition and a future result. Mixed conditional number three, here's my situation. She is working now. She could not give us a ride. But if she didn't have to work, my present condition, she would have given us a ride. That would have been the past result, all right? It happened in the past. Mixed conditional number four with the situation, they will bring food, we didn't make a reservation. But if they, if they weren't going to bring food tonight, we would have made a reservation at the restaurant, okay? So that is a quick review of all of these, and I know, I know. It's a lot to try and take in. This information, it, it's a lot to take in. So it's good to practice them and learn them and, and, and do it slowly. It, it doesn't have to be very rushed. So now let's practice what we've learned today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a situation and I'm going to tell you whether the um, the condition is, in, if it's a past condition, if it's a present condition, if it's a future condition, I'll also tell you the result if it's past, present, or future. But I'm going to give you the situation and I'll tell you the, the condition, the result. Try to start thinking of a sentence. Don't think of the grammar too much. Don't try to analyze the grammar. Try to think of the sentence and express it and I want you to write it in the chat or if you're watching this later, write it in the comments. It's always great to practice and try to use the language, okay? So here's the first situation I have for you. And I'm also, I'm gonna give you a hint. I will give you the grammar as we do this. So the situation is, I'm not a billionaire. I did not stop working. I want you to use, we're talking about a present condition and a past result. Present condition and a past result. Okay, what would you say? I'm not a billionaire. I did not stop working. All right, write the sentence. I want you to write the sentence in the chat. Okay, Try and, and again, even if you're a little unsure, just practice writing. Practice, uh, practice your, your skills. It's always good. So let me, let me give you a little hint, all right? All right, this, this would be the grammar. If you're confused, like, oh, I'm not sure which grammar to use. Again, the present condition, use the simple past. The past result, we're gonna use would have plus, plus the past participle. I'm not a billionaire. I did not stop working. But, and then write our mixed conditional. So again, we're just basically saying but, and rewording this using a mixed conditional in the simple past and would have plus the base verb, okay? Um, okay, close, I think, uh, all right, a lot of people, thank you guys for the answers. Uh, yes, excellent, so I think most of us got it. Remember, um, that past result would be would have plus the base, um, the would have plus the past participle. Here's the answer, if I were a billionaire, simple past, all right? I'm not a billionaire, but if I were a billionaire, past result, I would have stopped working, okay? So basically, I'm not a billionaire, I did not stop working, but if I were a billionaire, I would have stopped working. I would have stopped working in the past, but I'm not a billionaire, I didn't stop working, and even if I were, I would not stop working. I enjoy working with you guys, I enjoy this too much. Okay, so I hope that makes sense that we can use these situations to try and write the mixed conditional. Let's look at the next one. So here is our situation. He ate breakfast. All right, happened in the past. That's our past condition. He ate breakfast. So the present result, he is not hungry now. All right, he ate breakfast. He is not hungry now. Can you try, try to change that? Are not try, yeah, try to take that situation and write a mixed conditional sentence, okay? Um, write it in the chat, or again, even if you're watching this later, interact with us, uh, participate, write these sentences in the comments. So here is your hint, okay? Again, past condition, the, the condition, we're gonna use the past perfect. The present result, we're gonna use would and the verb, okay? 
He ate breakfast. He is not hungry now. But what would you say? What, what conditional sentence, what mixed conditional could we use to represent that? Um, getting some good answers. Um, excellent. Thank you guys for writing answers. Aiden, Kira, Pato, Ani, thank you guys for participating. Uh, Murilo, let's look at our answer, all right? He ate breakfast. He is not hungry now. But if he had not eaten breakfast... He would be hungry now. If he had not eaten breakfast, we're using the past perfect. He would be hungry now. We're using would plus the base verb, all right? He would be, I just added really in there, but you could just say he would, uh, he would be hungry now or he, he would be really hungry now or you can take out now. He ate breakfast. He is not hungry now. But if he had not eaten breakfast, he would be really hungry, all right? That would be the past condition and the present result. Let's practice another one. Are you ready? Here is the situation, okay? This time it's a future condition and a past result. She is not able to play in tomorrow's tournament. I found a replacement. She's not able to play in tomorrow's tournament, so I found a replacement. But... How can we write, how can we use this mixed conditional to, to express this situation? How can we say that? Write your answers, write it in the chat, write it in the comments. Um, all right, what would you guys say? She is not able to play in tomorrow's tournament. I found a replacement. Let me give you, whoop, there it is. There's your, there's your grammar hint. If you guys are looking for the grammar of what you would want to use, remember the future condition, you're gonna use the simple past. The past result would have plus the past participle, okay? What, 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 what would you say? How would you express this uh, situation using this mixed conditional? She is not able to play in tomorrow's tournament. I found a replacement. What do you guys think? All right. See if you can write that sentence. If you are unsure and want to know the answers, remember. Future condition, simple past, past result, would have plus the past participle. So she's not able to play in the ter tomorrow's tournament. I found a replacement, but if she were able to play in tomorrow's tournament, and again, I went back, I'm using that, uh, I, I use the uh, subjunctive. If she were able to play in tomorrow's tournament, I would not have found a replacement. Okay, we just reworded it. We reworded this situation using the mixed conditional. She is not able to play in tomorrow's tournament, so I found a replacement. But if she were not able to play in tomorrow's tournament, I would not have found a replacement. So again, these mixed conditionals, I, I understand, I know that they can be very challenging, very confusing. I would suggest go back, rewatch it, and think about the two things. When you're trying to understand mixed conditionals, don't focus as much on the grammar. Focus more on the situation and when these things are happening, all right? Are these things happening in the past? Are they happening in the present? Are they happening in the future? I think that is the best way to understand these mixed conditionals. So I really, really thank you guys for being here with me today. Thank you, Patty, Dejan, Dejan Jr., um, Murillo, uh, Lisjela, Jawad, Aurora, Ani, Mustafa, Amano, Judy, Gosia. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Daria. Sorry if I missed some names. I hope that you enjoyed the lesson. I hope you found it um, maybe a little easier. Let make it. I hope I made it a little more easier to follow along and understand these mixed conditionals because, like I said. When you're talking about general conditionals, they're rule-based, you can kind of follow the grammar, but mixed conditionals, don't focus on the grammar, focus on the situation, focus on when they're happening. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments once this, is, this video is posted. Also, please like and share this lesson with 
uh, your friends, any, your classmates, anybody you know who's trying to practice and improve their English. Because again, this is definitely a more advanced grammar concept when we're talking about mixed conditionals. And as always, you can join our social media classes. We always post questions to help you guys practice and improve your English skills. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. And I will see you guys next time.